Hi everyone, welcome to Living Life. Today we're looking at our Sovereign God. And I also want to welcome you to this very important meditation because we are here during Holy Week. It is Passion Week. And I know this is a very meaningful time for a lot of us. So in today's story, we're going to be in Matthew 27, and we're going to be looking at the circumstances surrounding the crucifixion of Jesus. And let's keep this in mind. Everything that happened in Jesus' life during Holy Week, uh, the Last Communion, His betrayal, His trial, His crucifixion, and His resurrection, all those things were already predicted in the Bible, in the Old Testament, many centuries before. And you want to know why? Because God is sovereign. God knows all things. God knows the past, the present, and the future here in the life of His Son, Jesus Christ. But also for you and me, God knows our past, our present, and our future. God knows what's going to happen in our lives today, tomorrow, and next week. So our God is in control So put your faith and trust in Him and let Him lead you and guide you every single day. So to begin our meditation, let's get into the scripture. Please follow along as we read from Matthew 27, starting at verse 1. Matthew chapter 27, verses 1 through 10. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said, It is against the law to put this into the treasury since it is blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why it has been called the field of blood to this day. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the thirty pieces of silver, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. You know, our Holy Week meditation today is one of the most difficult parts of Holy Week to understand and comprehend, and that is the actions of Judas Iscariot. Why did he do it? What happened in him? And what was the result of his huge mistake? Judas Iscariot betrayed Christ. Now, in Matthew 27, the opening scene is at Caiaphas' house. Now, I've been there. It was a couple of years ago. I was in Jerusalem. It was um, on one side of the Temple Mount. And Caiaphas' house basically was the house of the high priest. And when you go into Caiaphas' house, There is a prison room that is underground where they put Jesus. And right outside of Caiaphas' house is a courtyard where Peter denied Christ three times. So when Jesus was arrested in the middle of the night, the next day, early in the morning, uh, the high priest and the Sanhedrin sent Jesus to Pilate. When they sent Jesus to Pilate, Judas Iscariot realized that they were going to kill Jesus. It makes me ask a lot of questions. What did Judas think he was doing? Did he think that the high priests were going to slap him on the wrist? That they were going to send him back to Galilee? That they were just going to try him and reprimand him? But the Bible clearly tells us when Judas realized that they were going to kill Jesus and condemn Jesus, Judas experienced remorse great remorse. Now, biblically speaking, theologically speaking, there's a big difference between repentance and remorse. Okay, Repentance is when you 
uh, acknowledge your sin, you take responsibility, and you make an about face, and you change your life. Remorse is you feel bad, you feel sorry. So there's a lot of people in the world today when they do something bad that they feel bad and they feel sorry, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't do anything. So Judas felt a lot of remorse. He went back to the priests and he threw the money at them, the 30 coins of silver. Judas wanted to return the money and he wanted to undo what he did. Now here's the fact of the matter. We can't. When we make a mistake, when we mess up, when we cheat on our wife, when we steal money, when we commit a crime, right? We can't undo it. We can't wave a magic wand and like it didn't happen. No, there's consequences. We have to pay a price. And thank the Lord for Jesus Christ because Jesus dying on the cross, he paid the price for our sin. I've committed sins, you've committed sins, we've all committed sins. There's nothing that we can do to pay the price of sin. But you know what? Jesus Christ on the cross paid the price. So let's get back here to the story. So the priests and the Pharisees knew that they couldn't take the money back and put it back into the temple because the money was blood money. The money was used to kill a man, right? The money was like the money they used to hire a hitman to kill Jesus. So what they did is they bought a field of land, you know, the potter's field, where they would bury the foreigners that would come to Israel. Now, one of the things that I observed when I went to Israel a couple of years ago is I was at the Mount of Olives, and I was looking back at Jerusalem. Beautiful view. On the Mount of Olives, I was looking back at the Temple Mount. And our tour guide pointed out to us, if you look to the left, there was a field. And all around the field were houses, uh, condos, old buildings. But there was a field that laid empty. And our tour guide told us that is Potter's Field. That is the field that was bought with the blood money that Judas betrayed Jesus Christ. And he said, not even today, Christians... Jews or Muslims will touch that land. Even today, it's still there, exactly as it was 2,000 years ago. And it's there as a testament. It's there as a testament of the bad thing that Judas did, and uh, he tried to fix it, and he couldn't fix it. And the Bible tells us here in the scripture that we read that Judas went out and he hanged himself. He committed suicide. It's a very sad story. But on the other side, we have the story of Peter. He didn't betray Christ. Peter denied Christ, but Peter did not commit suicide. Peter allowed God or Jesus to restore him. Judas did not allow God to restore him. He tried to fix it himself. And that's what I've learned in life. Whenever we try to fix our problems, we make a bigger problem. We make a deeper hole. And what we need to do is we need to repent and not be remorseful. And everything that happened here in today's meditation in Holy Week was predicted. It's in the Bible. It's in the Old Testament. It was in Jeremiah. Jeremiah predicted that all this stuff was going to happen. And that demonstrates God's sovereignty. He knows our past. He knows our present. And He knows our future. And what's a beautiful part of the story is that God still loves us. So God loves you. Let's bring our study to a close today. As we close in prayer today, let's just keep in mind that God knows our past, present, and future. And if God knows our past, our present, and our future, that means that God is sovereign. He knows all things. God knows when we're going to make mistakes. God knows when we're going to let Him down. And even though we let God down, He still loves us. But we need to be humble. We need to repent. We need to turn away from our sin. And we do not need to follow the example of Judas, who took matters into his own hands and took his own life. We have to come to the cross, get on our knees, and humble ourselves before God 
And then God will restore us no matter what we've done and uh, who we might have offended. So let's pray together and uh, let's invite the Lord to be sovereign in our lives. So let's pray. Heavenly Father God, uh, we acknowledge the fact that you are sovereign and you know our past, our present, and our future. And just like Holy Week and all the terrible and sad things that happened to Jesus, it was already recorded hundreds of years before because you are an amazing God. So we pray, Lord God, that with your sovereign power, that you would take control of our lives and that you would restore us to be the people that you've called us to be. So touch each person now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.